Well, that was weird. <clears throat> Looked up and my camera was off. Why? Because it wasn't plugged in. Okie dokie. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am a little early today, yet I didn't start on time. Sorry about that. And I'm still getting this weird error again from YouTube stream. Current resolution is 1440, which is not supported for this configuration. I didn't set that resolution. <laughs> Not sure what it's talking about. I'm just sending HD. I'm not trying to send out 1440p. That's for my other stuff, not this stuff. I don't know. Anyway, hey, I'm Aunt Perut. Hope y'all are doing all right. This is my uh, little Friday sit down, get together, if you will, creator office hours where I like to sit here and just as people pop in, if they have any questions, comments about the side of the world of, um, content creation or freelance or what have you, be it photography, be it um, video or marketing or just uh, editing or what have you. If I got an answer, I'd try to answer it to the best of my ability. Um, but yeah, I'm just here to, to chat with you all and just say, Hey, so if I'm, if I can help you out, I shall do my best to try to help you out. If I can, that is. But yeah, that's what goes on here uh, today. I got quite a few things lined up that I need to handle, um, which is why I needed to push this office hours to be a little bit earlier today. Um, so basically, I do have a hard out, but I still have some buffer time in between just in case we go longer than the hour, because every now and then we do go longer than an hour and I. I'm cool with that because we've had some pretty good conversations. <clears throat> I don't have a cough button installed anymore. Um, I need to get a cough button back installed in here at some point. But anyway, um, if you're here watching live, please do me a favor and hit like on the YouTube app or YouTube page that you're on right now, the little thumbs up button. Please hit that now, as well as hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And if you can also hit the share be it share it to X, share it to your text message, to share it to Facebook, whatever. Tell other folks, come hang out, ask questions, and um, just uh, good old office hours. All right. So, but anyway, um, I'll wait on the questions to pop in. I see uh, people are starting to show up. Thank you for being here. I'll wait on some questions to pop in just in case. Somebody has a question for me. I am not working on anything this morning. Um, after my calls and stuff like that, I do have a project to finish up and it's with this guy here. I don't know if you can see that that says DJI on it. Um, and yes, that I know that's quite boring just this standard little gray box. This is the actual. So, oh, well, looks like I got fishing wire on it. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Yeah, you can, but that's the main thing. It's the DJI uh, Avada 2 drone. I've had this for a little while under wraps because of course embargoes, you're not supposed to say anything because you don't want to leak stuff and you don't want to screw up your uh, relationships with PR. So I've had this for, man, it's been about two weeks, something along those lines. And as you can see, I've got fishing wire on it because I was trying to do some photography with it. And good old trick is to use some fishing wire if you're trying to take pictures of stuff that suspended in air. So let me get the fishing wire off of here. There we go. Fishing lines now gone. There we go. So now this looks better, right? So that's the drone focus. Very good. Avada 2. 4K, 60 frames a second. 
It's got all the standard sensors and so forth. Again, there's not much more you can do with drones today from a tech wise standpoint, but yeah, divided to it's, um, it's a nice drone. It ain't perfect, but it is a nice drone in my experience. And your mileage is going to vary because it depends on what you want to use this drone for, but it is also FPV. Why is it not focusing? Focus. There it goes. So I can use that for a thumbnail potentially. All right, there. And I see some folks in the chat here. So let me give them a shout out to the chat here. Who is there? That is hybrid media. Whoa, what's up? And this ozone nightmare. Hello, gents. Good to see the both of you. And then, wow, super chat comes in again from Mr. Uh, ozone nightmare. Happy Friday, uh, Mr. Pruitt. Here's a little, wow, that sucks bit of cash for the troublesome everyday people stream sounded like an extremely frustrating evening dude oh man yeah the everyday people podcast which records ideally on wednesdays in the evenings um yeah so i started recording it and it just it was weird right out the gate when i started when i got everything going i was ready to go but apparently um, none of my gear was ready to go. Nothing, just nothing wanted to work for whatever reason. Then I finally got started. Um, actually, I could, let me give some details on what didn't want to go. My camera in particular, you know, I use a Canon R5C. And if you're not familiar with it, with the R5C, where it differs from other mirrorless cameras, mirrorless, um, DSLR type cameras where it differs from that is its video mode is a whole different operating system. It's not like if you just picked up your, I don't know, Canon R6 and you flip it to video, it still has the standard Canon operating system on it. With mine, it flips it into the same operating system used on their cinema cameras, such as the C300, the C70 and so forth, which is great because it's a really nice OS. The problem is my picture profile got weird. I turned it on and I looked at myself in the screen and my skin was purple. I'm like, Hmm, that's interesting. And ideally I'm thinking, all right, somehow I must've screwed up white balance on that. Typically that happens with black people. So, Went in and checked the white balance and set it to where it needed to be set because it was wrong. Sat down and I was still purple. But then I looked into the picture profile. They have a bunch of different picture profiles because, again, a cinema camera, you can shoot log or you can add your own LUTs and things like that. And I had some weird, I don't even know what the picture profile was, but it didn't work. So when I try to set it back to my default picture profile, which is designed for Rec. 709, Rec. 709 is the standard that you use for pretty much all of the screens you see today, uh, be it a movie screen, TV screen, phone screen, what have you. I set it to that and still my color went back to being wonky. So I ended up just making my own freaking profile on the OS, set it up. It's good to go. Now it's just sort of one and done. I turn it on. I hit that profile. I don't have to think twice about it. So that's done. Then the show goes on. <laughs> and and um, I use a, 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 a um, mic interface. I use a Mix Pre 3 Mark II. Love that thing. And I use that as part of my main audio. Okay. So what you hear, you know, coming through YouTube is me speaking into that interface because it gives me 32 bit float audio, freaking amazing, clean audio. Well, it has an SD card in it and I always record to that SD card as well as recording inside of OBS here on the other screen. So I'll have two, two, sometimes three different versions of the audio. Okay. But my master audio that I want to work with is on the mix pre. So while I'm talking in the middle of the show, the mix pre starts beeping in my ears and I look on the screen and it says, uh, yeah, that SD card is full. 
that's stupid of me. I had data on there from months ago that I didn't even need. So it was just totally taking up space. So while that happened, people watching the live stream at the time, my audio cut out. You could see me talking, but the audio didn't make it to the stream because the mix pre was locked up. So I paused myself. I didn't know the audio was, wasn't going out to the stream. I found this out later. So I paused it, cleared the card, resume recording like I normally would. So I just kept doing the show, but apparently that last 20 minutes or 10 minutes of the show had no audio going out to the live stream. <laughs> it's so, and I didn't see anything in the chat. So I, I, I don't know if people were there. I have no idea. So then as I got to the end of the show, um, I finished a story that I was talking about and then all of the power went out just like that. Well, no, the computer died. It just went black. My lights were still on. My camera was still going, but my computer was dead. So I'm like, what the shit? What happened? And come to find out it was the power went out in the house because my NAS died. The computer died. The, the, the hard head comes in. It's like, yeah, no power. And I'm like, hot damn. So that meant probably I didn't get my video file recorded properly because it just cut it. And fortunately it did work out. I was able to um, go back to YouTube, continue the stream with some audio and I just stopped it. And when I told YouTube to end the stream, it did its processing. So I was able to go back and download the live stream video. It was a lower quality video, but it was video. So I was able to download that and use that as part of my regular publishing for the show this week. My local recording, corrupt, no go, done. My local audio, it's good to go. I still had that. I just had that one little cut in the middle to add and I was good to go. But yeah, it was a bit of a shit-tastic day for <laughs> doing the show. I don't know why. Was it my fault? But it happens. I do know that I need a UPS at some point, but right now the UPS isn't a priority, but I do need to get a UPS at some point to keep things rolling because my NAS would appreciate it and my computer would appreciate it. Ooh, yeah. So now that's out of the way. Enough about my mishaps and woes. Good grief. <laughs> what about you? What are y'all up to today? Do you have any questions for me or other comments? What have you? You know, for again, my advice is if you can get some type of uninterrupted power supply in your set, do it, which is why my lights were fine because all of my lights, they're plugged in, but they also have batteries. Well, no, this one does not. But that one over there, it's, it's plugged in, but it's, it's, it's running on a battery, too. So I was good. The camera is good to go. I have to run my camera on a battery because the um, the dummy battery that I plug in for AC power on it, damn dog chewed on it. So it got shorted out. So now I just plug in one of my V mount batteries. I have, um, do I have one of them over here? I thought I had one on my desk. Yeah. Oh, well, no worries, but it's just a V mount battery and I just plug in USB C to USB C and it uh, powers it up, keeps it going for a couple hours if I need it to, depending on if I, how I'm recording. But since I'm not recording, it's, it'll, it'll it'll definitely last a couple of hours. And as long as the fan is running on the camera, which the R5C does have a fan on it, which I love. Speaking of the R5C. It's a freaking underrated camera uh, comment from uh, I was on nightmare. Not sure if you've seen the reviews on human AI pen. I'm strangely in interested in that thing, but I'm kind of shocked they released it in such a no, I have not So let's go look at human AI pen. Let's see. What is this? This is when it goes to the search engine. Human AI pen. 
Oh, humane AI pen worked it better than I expected, says The Verge. So let's see here. As I share my screen, we'll do a full screen there. And we'll do this. All right. The humane AI pen worked better than I expected until it didn't. I don't even know what it is. Oh, this thing. The pen projects menus onto your palm for a few basic gestures. The idea reiterated as I watched a couple of humane employees run through various demos was that it meant it's meant to keep you connected while unplugging a little bit. Um, I don't buy that. <laughs> it's just, if you're unplugging, you're unplugging. You know, um, there's a lot of OK, soapbox time. There's a lot of people that talk about work life balance and 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 managing your time, managing your 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 zen and all of this stuff and being disconnected and and it's and and they don't they talk the talk but they don't walk the walk. You know, so right there that line helps keep you connected while unplugging a bit, a little bit is bullshit. If you're unplugging, you're unplugging, you know, and I know Mr. Esposito is an, is an IT professional. I'm a former, former IT professional. I get that there are times where you have to be connected all the time. I've lived that life. I don't miss that life at all. Um, but even then, when I was on vacation, pay time off or whatever you want to have it. When I was off the clock, not scheduled to be working and on the clock, my black ass was disconnected. I was unplugged. Uh, yes, I had my phone on me, but you did not have the right to reach out to me about some work shit. That is unplugging, <laughs> you know, or even if you're not in that profession like that and you just want to have a weekend or a day away from the notifications of social media or away from the notifications of email or texting or whatever. Um, dude, you just um, put your phone away. There's a lot of times my phone is, isn't in the same room with me because I'm disconnected. Um, so again, that, that whole line right there from these people, that's, that's bullshit. I, I don't, I don't buy that, but I don't even really know much about this thing. I remember Laporte talked about it briefly, but I brushed it off because I thought it was pretty stupid. There's a comment here from Mr. Esposito here. Let's see. He says, Mr. Sargent made an excellent point that if you're using a laser to protect info, to project info on your hand, why the hell not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why the hell not use your phone? You know, it, that's that's exactly my point. Again, that goes back to the whole I am unplugging or disconnecting from my own mental health. You know, that's that's just just trying to say some shit. So everybody's going to look at you and be like, whoa, whoa, well, good on you. Good on you for recognizing that and doing that for yourself. But then yet at the same time, you, you posing and oh, no, did, did they respond to my, my Instagram DM? Let me see. You know, that that's that's bullshit. So, yeah, Mr. Esposito, this gets no love from me. Um, if someone is going to say, yeah, I'm judging it. Yeah, I'm judging it because or just the way this is being pitched to me. I want no part of it. It's it's phony baloney bullshit that tech folks um, were able to get a bunch of investors to get this shit together. And somebody's just trying to spin it into something that we really don't even freaking need. Okay. Sorry. Off of my soapbox. <laughs> oh my gosh. I tell you, it is, it's, I struggle with tech news today. All right. I do y'all. I struggle with tech news and the problem is 
I think that right now we're just such at such a plateau moment as far as tech innovation goes. Um, you know, it's not like how it was 20 years ago or, or even 10 years ago. You know, you remember, if, you know, we've talked about Steve Jobs on here in the past, but you remember when that iPhone came out, that original iPhone came out. That's that was freaking newsworthy. OK, now the iPhone 15, in my opinion, it's not newsworthy. It just it's not much has changed there. Uh, remember when when laptops got thinner. At one time, that was decent news. And then that MacBook Air came out. That was newsworthy. I still remember the ad of them taking the laptop out of a manila uh, envelope. That's that was newsworthy. Yeah, taking something, you know, a computing device and making that form factor as drastic as a, you know, as, as a drastic change like that. So, yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, but nowadays, I think we're struggling a bit when it comes to tech innovation. I think things are just sort of plateaued off. You know, nothing really surprises us anymore. So now there's this whole push of either blockchain the hell out of it. That's a buzzword thrown into it or AI the hell out of it. That's another buzzword is thrown into it, you know. And so this freaking quote humane AI pen sounds like yet another attempt at let's try to just quote disrupt. And they're not really disrupting shit when you can just you got the pen on your chest. Just take the damn phone out of your pocket and look at it. You probably already have face unlocked, so it's not that much of an effort to take it out of your pocket and flip it over, and, you, and your face unlocks the phone. No, no more different than you sticking your hand perfectly in the spot where that damn laser can shine on your hand. You know, it's such bullshit. Um, but yeah, I struggle with tech news today because a lot of it's just not as interesting to me. Um, there's not a lot going on, you know. For example. This drone, this DJI Avada 2. I don't particularly have much use for drones anymore. They sent it to me and I told them I'm going to give it an honest shake. And I did give it an honest shake. I'm still not done yet. I have to do a little quick um, video on it at some point. Uh, but with this drone here, this thing isn't for everybody. What they did from a technology standpoint is they, they made it made it better from a performance side. They trimmed up how they got the, the propellers on it. So it flies a little bit better. The weight is different. The, the actual, you know, form factor of the, the, the aircraft itself is slightly different. All of that is, is they try to innovate and yes, it's an improvement over, over the other drone, but the real kicker. is this right here, the goggles. I'm going to take my glasses off for a second. The goggles. All right. So these things we've been talking about. Again, Apple and Vision Pro and stuff like that and wanting to wear shit on your face, computing devices on your face for an extended amount of time is problematic for some people. These goggles, they're quite nice. There's a fan on the inside of this thing, you can hear it a little bit sometimes depending on your environment, but there's a fan on the inside of this thing that blows that helps try to keep things cool. So you're not sweating your ass off. There's all of these additional sensors and so forth. And then if you're, if you happen to land the drone and you want to take a look around in the past, you flip your, your, your goggles up to look around and check out your surroundings. No, not with these because there's two cameras on the front. You literally just tap it on the side like two times, bam, and it gives you a freaking camera view of your surroundings real time. Very, 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 very low latency. You could walk around. Now, granted, the focal length on it is not quite 50 millimeters like the human eye. It's a little bit tighter than that. Um, but still. That's noteworthy. That is a big change, you know? So <laughs> that that's 
that's the kind of shit that that I get excited about. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the tech stuff today. No, I'm not feeling it. But this right here, this drone, because drones are not for everybody. But in addition to the whole, you know, yes, I can look through it now without taking them off. Again, the fan on it, the battery life on it increase and the frame rate of looking at this. I, I struggle with with my ears. You know, I used to get vertigo just at the drop of a hat. For, I don't know why my ears are just craptastic. And as I've gotten older, it's gotten worse. So playing FPV games and stuff like that, I used to have C bands at my desk so I could play Team Fortress 2. That was the only way I could do it. I used to take uh, Dramamine if I knew I was going to be playing Team Fortress 2 a couple night, uh, a couple hours in the night. Uh, just that was the only way I could enjoy it. And when the Oculus Rift came out a gazillion years ago, I was at CES and they brought it in there. I put it on. I had that freaking headset on. It may have been 15 seconds maybe 15 seconds. I don't even know if it was that long. And I was immediately sick, nauseated. And the issue is because of the, the frame rate. It was, it was just, just wasn't there and it was screwing with my ears. Now I still take my nausea pills or what have you. But when I tried this for the first time, when I tried these DJI goggles three for the first time, without any type of treatment or what have you, it was night and day difference. It's they're getting it right. So that's the kind of stuff that excites me when it comes to tech news. Okay. Sorry, man. I've been, I'm ranting a little bit today and I don't mean to rant. I mean for this to be a time for y'all to ask me questions and so forth. I'm sorry about that. Oh, another chat, another super chat, <laughs> another super chat. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe Esposito says in complete agreement on disconnecting. I'm one of the few people in my organ organization that will not run work apps on my cell phone when I'm off the clock. Don't bother trying to reach me, baby. I'm a ghost. Exactly. Because that is your right. You're off the clock. Your labor law says you're not on the clock. <laughs> he also says, wow, those goggles look like 90s. Uh, cyberpunk nerd stream. Yeah, they, they do look pretty, pretty interesting. Um, they're not bad. They're, they're, they're not, they're not hard on the eyes. I'll say that. Oh man. I used to love TF2 sniper all day long. Oh, you played sniper. God, I hate you so much. Sniper was pretty fun, but for me, I was a demo man. I like playing demo man. I liked soldier. Okay. And I liked, um, What's the other one? Uh, engineer. Engineer. I mean, an engineer could get boring every now and then, depending on the map, just sort of sitting around. Wow. Let me look up, show y'all Team Fortress. Because there's um, <laughs> it's a YouTube trailer that I just freaking love. Team Fortress 2. Where you get to meet the players. Where is it? Dang it. Okay, so that's Meet the Pyro. Yeah, that's the Pyro. I don't want that one. I want the, um, my favorite one was probably the the Heavy, Meet the Heavy. Yeah, here it is. So let me pull that up. So we'll do full screen there. And I don't know if my audio is coming through here. Let me give y'all some audio to listen to. And then we'll switch screen. There. Hundred fifty kilograms and fires two hundred dollar custom tool cartridges at ten thousand rounds per, per sec. Minute. Oh, per minute. <laughs> it costs four hundred thousand dollars to fire this weapon for twelve seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I love this stuff, man. Yes. <laughs> I love the sound effects. <laughs> Can I some more? <laughs> oh, 
that game is just so freaking awesome. The orange bots, man. Ah, loved it. Loved it. I haven't tried it on this Mac yet. I mean, I played this game as recently as like last year. No, year before last. Yeah, it's been a, maybe it's been about two years because I haven't played it since I got the Mac. But I used to play it on Steam quite a bit. And I'm not a gamer at all, but I enjoyed that stuff, dude. I enjoyed that game. Used to play it back in um, back in the days at my old job because we were all a bunch of IT guys and we would have land parties because we got the resources <laughs> you know including the cio would play with us it, it was yeah dude we, we had a good time and then after hours we would play that night on another server that we knew a guy that that ran a server and had our own team speak and stuff and ah uh, yeah those were the days man good old days yeah sorry Anyway, what's been going on with y'all? Again, thank y'all for being here and watching live. And if you're watching live right now, please do me a favor and hit the like button on the screen. So YouTube will show me some love. I appreciate that. I do. Uh, I was on nightmare in the chat says. I oh mean, I used to love TF2. I always played Pyro because that character was a lunatic. Yes, he was. Pyro was great. You can just sort of run, just run amok, just burn through everything. It was great. Been meaning to jump back in. Um, been a while, but I put massive hours in that game. So well made. Yeah, and that's the thing. The game was like sort of, it was cartoony. You know, and, and the graphics that it was competing against were, were way better. You know, you look at stuff like Call of Duty back then and Modern Warfare, and that game blew my mind. Oh, that game was so awesome. But I still played TF2 just as much as I, as I played Modern Warfare, you know. So. Oh, man, good stuff. Good stuff. Memory lane. Oh, but yeah, I need to, um, I need to shoot some more video with this DJI, DJI Avada 2 drone. So some of my first instances with this thing, let me just go ahead and tell y'all now. You're going to need a good SD card, micro SD card, because you're going to be filming 4k 60 frames per second. And you go out and buy some little El Cheapo micro SD card, you're going to be shit out of luck. It's it's going to try to record and then it's not going to be able to keep up because it can't write fast enough. So that's the first thing, because I threw a cheap one in there that I just found sitting on the floor somewhere in here because I'm a weirdo and have SD cards just lying around and it did not work. It does have internal storage on it. Um. But my experience with the internal storage on it has been has been hit or miss too. It only records two and a half minutes or so, and then just stops. And after and you can see the indicator on the heads up display that it stopped recording. You just hit record again, and it'll carry on. So I'm not sure what's up with that, man. Oh wait a minute, what's this ozone nightmare has got going on? This weekend, I got to start on an art commission and get a video edit going on another double feature podcast. That's a good. Holy crap, dude. You're about as busy as I am. <laughs> Holy moly. Dude. And he also says the drone. It does feel like the drone hype has largely died out outside of movies and pro space. Yeah, exactly. To your point on tech in general, it feels like how everything is shorter and shorter hype cycles. Yeah, the um, this Avada drone, if you want to use this just for your own fun and kicks and giggles, it's great for that. If you can afford it um, to its credit. If you had the old goggles, you don't have to buy the new goggles, but I highly would, I would highly suggest getting the new goggles and this drone. So it's going to cost you a little bit more money. So I think the new goggles are like 300 bucks. 
Um, so if you're going to just do it for kicks and giggles, it's, it's fun. It'll, it'll do that. If you want to do some real estate stuff, you can do some real estate stuff with it, but you need to make sure you're pretty skilled because flying indoors is a bit of a challenge because of all of the wake turbulence and stuff like that, that you're creating. So you, 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 you gotta be careful. It takes a lot of practice. Um, even though this thing is small, lightweight, and it's got guardrails, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to destroy it. But you can destroy other stuff in the process, you know, break things inside of the house. So be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to shoot a movie with it, you can. I don't think it's going to look as good as putting um, put in like a a, a Sony FX3 on a larger drone, you know, because that's what most people are doing in the movie space. Just as he says here in his in his comments, there's a lot of cine drones out there that cost more than this, and they're a little bit bigger and heavier, bigger batteries and stuff like that because they need to last longer. Granted, the battery on this thing, I, they I believe they said you get in a half hour in the documentation, and that's no bullshit. You're getting a half an hour. It, you're flying for this on this thing for quite a while. It is it is nice to see that 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 technology has gotten better too. So, yeah, I used to I used to have a drone. I've flown a bunch of different drones, and my drone that I owned, I threw it away not too long ago. Just flat out threw it away because it was useless flying around here. I'm not part 107 um, certified. I just didn't ever see the need to do it. And I'm glad I didn't because hadn't had any type of request for it. Never really saw any request for it. Even with real estate people, they're like, nah, we don't need it. <laughs> what matters more is how does the inside of this house look? Not the aerial. Um, but I threw the drone away because of that, as well as the ba the batteries that came that I needed to use with it. They're the end of their life. And you can't buy those batteries anymore because lithium, ion, lithium polymer, what? Well, lipo batteries i don't know the full name but it's lipo batteries their life life cycle is, is 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 pretty finite so when you get these drones be it the avada 2 or any other drone you need to consider that you're only going to have this thing for a couple years because at some point they're probably going to stop making the intelligent batteries for it because they've moved on to the next product in their in their plan in their forecast if you will um, so that's something to consider. Yeah. They give you three of these, three of these batteries <clears throat> right here. And that's great. It gives you more flying time. But if you're thinking long-term, you're probably going to be getting a new drone in another couple of years, just so you know. And I like this little charging rack here, this charging rack that the batteries sit in. Pretty convenient. You literally just, it goes in one way and it's locked in easy, straightforward, but you can also use it to charge other stuff. So stick some batteries in here and you want to charge up your phone. You can, because it's got the USB-C port right there. It's pretty cool. All right. Sorry for slamming the, that on the desk and vibrating. So it's pretty nice. And the cameras on these, the cameras is fine. <clears throat> I think I just have a bit of snobbery when it comes to drone cameras now because image sensors are still way too small, in my opinion. They could make these image sensors a little bit bigger, but they won't because, you know, weight and scaling around it and all of that. So they won't that you're only going to get so much quality out of a tiny less than a half of an inch in size image sensor. It is. It's no different from your phone. Speaking of phone, mine just buzzed. I'm sorry about that. I'm supposed to be muted. Whoops. So rude. There, turn that off. Sorry about that. All right. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Folks out there, 
and see y'all watching, but y'all are shy. <laughs> You're a shy group out there today. <laughs> oh, man. I was on nightmare. He's definitely not shy. <laughs> it's sad that it's a rarity to see companies that give you lots of accessories and utilities. Well, even with this drone, these accessories, it, it, it's, it's a package deal. They definitely ain't giving, giving them to you. Not at all. DJI is saying, look, we'll sell you the drone, but then we're going to also sell you the new remote. <laughs> we're going to also sell you two additional batteries, you know, and, and it's just, a, that's just a weird model, you know, um, assuming you'll be on media capture duty for much ado. No, they, I don't think they can afford me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. I don't think, well, no, I take that back. The junior college, they probably can afford me. They just don't want to afford me. I'll just say that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of the stuff that um, I've noticed in my freelance endeavors. <clears throat> I think I told you all the story of one of my friends reached out to me. He's like, hey, someone wants to do this shoot, but I can't. I'm going to send them to you. And I'm always grateful for referrals. He sent them to me and it was a bit of a last minute request, but I was available. And the company basically wanted a discount. And I'm like, no, you're getting a good rate now. And they kept coming back. Um, and I was like, no, <laughs> the only thing that I can do discount wise is I won't be there as long, but this is the rate, you know, and what ended up happening is I started to look into this particular event that the company was needing my coverage for. And the event was going to be in the city in San Francisco, of course, but it was going to be at a really, really nice hotel really nice hotel that had a very, very nice conference room and stuff like that. And so I started doing the math. They had, I think they had like 15 guests of honor. And I just assumed that they had to put those guests of honors honor in a hotel room. Okay. So that's just an assumption. And I say, okay, well, since I'm making an assumption, let's just assume that they're only putting one person in a hotel room or maybe two people in a hotel room and the rest of those guests, they're on their own. With that said, <laughs> so that was booking for at least one night, which is probably not just one night because conferences like that tend to be a couple of days. So I said, just one night, let's take a look at it. The room rate at that hotel was like $900 a night. But you tried to cheap out on me and my time when these cats, no, that's not how that works. So I didn't, I didn't tell them any of that as if I knew what they were doing, but I stood my ground. I was like, I know you can afford it. <laughs> you can afford these swanky hotel rooms for these, for these other folks. So, you can afford me too, man. Uh, I just got an email from, from, um, Rod Pyle. Love that guy. Ozone says here, what does he say? I'm betting they assume most folks don't ever look at, look that far into clients to make sure they're not being taken advantage of. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But in my experience in the past, prior to being here in California, the people that reached out, you know, that were running companies, you know, it, it's... I don't know. I guess I was just fortunate enough to know that most people, they have a marketing budget that's, you know, well into $20,000 at that, just at minimum $20,000 marketing wise. And 
that's not for the year. That's like per event. And I guess I don't even, I don't even know how I knew that stuff, but <laughs> I did. And it, that was always part of the back of my mind and in my measuring stick of rates and so forth. So I don't know. Well, email, interesting email here from uh, Mr. Rod Powell. I'm not going to show it on the screen, but he, um, messaged me about LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn a lot. Now you really have to use it now, but LinkedIn used to be my go-to far as, um, far as getting jobs, especially during headshot season. Okay. So let's go to my profile here because Rod Powell is messaging me about my LinkedIn profile. And he says, working on recommendation and any notice and it says educa education. And uh, I got on mine. I'll just show you, but he's, I'll show you what I got. But he says it's kind of an attention getter, but not sure if it's right for LinkedIn. Kind of sounds like a Trump supporter. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but let me show you my LinkedIn profile here. So let's make this full screen and let y'all see LinkedIn for me. All right there. There we go. So here's my LinkedIn profile. But yeah, I use LinkedIn quite a bit at one time. That was my main money get money maker kind of thing. Um, because people always needed headshots and there and companies are here. And you're dealing with professional people. So they take things more seriously over here. But I got a lot of business from LinkedIn. So you never hear me just sort of poo poo it, if you will. So if we look at my profile. And you're scrolling down. Uh, what does it say? Here we go. Education. There's University of Phoenix. But I really put on there, doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the thing. Education, in my opinion, for this particular space that I'm in, doesn't matter. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I don't even think it matters in my IT profession back in the days because no one really looked at the fact that you went to so-and-so college and you had a so-and-so GPA. What they wanted to know was, um, are you able to, to put this switch and router into the network so we can make things more efficient internally and safe or, are you able to query this database and print out this report for us? That's given us this data and that data based on this function. And you know, no one gave a shit about your degree when it came to these two fields that I've been in. As a matter of fact, one of the most dangerous men I know, <laughs> and I say that tongue in cheek because the guy is absolutely brilliant. He, if you were to see him walking down the street, you might think he's a homeless guy. You might think he was a bum or something like that, but he is a brilliant programmer, brilliant developer. I mean, he knows this stuff in and out. He could probably write his own operating system. I mean, just by himself, you know, he is legit. And from a college education standpoint, he only went to college just so you could say, I do have a degree. And where he went to college was this tiny little community college. And the classes that, that he took in that had nothing to do with IT. Not a damn thing. <laughs> but you want this dude to write you something that's in an object-oriented programming language? He got you. You want him to write something in, in old-fashioned C? He got you. You know, <laughs> whatever you want him to figure out how to properly and efficiently get the stuff out of the database. He got you, you know? So yeah, that's why on my LinkedIn profile, it says education. It doesn't matter because it doesn't for me. I make art. You, you don't give two shits about where I went to college or if I went to college, you want to know, can I make this art or can I make this graphic? Can I make this video for you and, and make it shine? That's what you want to know. So 
that's where I stand on that. Oh, another chat comes in here from Cheese Media, Cheesehead Media. Hey, good to see you. I ain't seen your name in a little while. It says, I appreciate you sharing the ins and outs of being an event photographer. Do you have any other questions about that, about the event photographer? Because it is, um, the business side of it is one thing, but then the actual execution is another thing. Um, I had to laugh about just thinking back to that previous story of the person with the rates and they're trying to cheap out, cheapen out on me. Part of the discussion in that negotiation is they also wanted the raw files. <laughs> they wanted the raw files from the shoot. That's a big hell's no, 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 never, never, ever, 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 never. No, you're not getting raw files from me or any photographer because we own, we own that. Our copyright is on those images. Okay. Photographer takes the pictures. He owns them. He or she owns those pictures. They can license the images. You know what I'm saying? You can license them, but as far as getting raws, no, that ain't happening. So if someone ever asks you that, don't do it. Or if you just want to be a jerk, because every now and then you have to be a jerk to prove a point. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you want to be a jerk or a jackass, send them the raw files and see what happens. Most people can't freaking open them. Most people can't even manipulate them. They have to hire somebody else to do that. So no, don't do that, y'all. <laughs> cheese media says cheesehead media says i also work in it and nobody cares about my education or lack thereof boom see it ain't just me it ain't just me and you know another funny thing most photographers that i have met over the years have all had some level of it background I would say roughly 90 to 95% of the photographers I know have spent some time in tech somewhere. Wonder why that is. And I assume it's because of how our minds are. You know, we, we, we click that shutter. This happens. Okay. Why did that happen? Then we start tinkering. What happens if I open this aperture a little bit more? Boom. Okay. Wow interesting then we get deeper and we're like okay so what if i change this lens boom okay that's an interesting change so what happens if i open this lens up <laughs> and see what's going on on the inside in there oh there's a ribbon cable right there why is this ribbon cable here oh because it's attached to this switch that sets the autofocus motor off and on you know it, it's i think that's part of why a lot of it folks get into photography i have no idea because it the cameras are are much easier to work with nowadays, but they're still quite technical hands on and a lot of geekery and configuration can go into setting up your shot. I mean, the exposure triangle alone is three different components that you have to fool with to get your your shot to look good. You know, yes, there's an automatic mode, but I shoot in manual for about as long as I can remember. Uh, because I wanted to learn the camera and I wanted to learn the exposure triangle better. So I forced myself to shoot in manual and now I can't take manual off. It, it, it feels weird. You know, so if I'm in the middle of shooting a baseball game, like yesterday, this, the sun is out and, and batter one comes up there and you, you click it. Boom. Looks good. But then batter two comes up and the cloud rolls over. What the hell are you going to do? Well, I know I can just roll this dial <laughs> one particular way to slow down the shutter speed just a touch and I'm going to get more light. And I only know that from the years of practice, you know, so. Oh, dude, another super chat from OJ o Ozone Nightmare. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate the super chats. Uh, it says agree. Education only matters for small pool of jobs, say in brain surgeon. Yes. Every job I've ever gotten hired was absolutely based on the interview and experience. And that's a good thing because <laughs> he went to art school. <laughs> I freaking love that, dude. <laughs> 
Good stuff. You know, and I got to let me let me say something about your brain surgeon comment here. Even with the brain surgeon. All right. I don't know, again, if they're looking at did they have the GPA of a 4.3? OK, I still think at the end they want to know, does my brain surgeon know where the hypothalamus is <laughs> in relation to the corpus callosum and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Yes, I was previously a sports medicine major, so I know a little bit of stuff about the human body. But yeah, just, you know, I think that's what those employers are looking for, because you graduate from Harvard Medical School with your 4.5 GPA, what have you, and they're going to call you doctor. You graduate from Harvard Medical School with a 3.0 um, GPA and they call you doctor. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> We've been totally all over the place in this office hours, but I love it. All right. So we've been here an hour. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here and get ready for my next appointment. Um, thank you all for being here. And thank you for all of the super chats there that that helps support the, the channel and support me. And thank you for the super comments for people to watch later. Thank you for sharing it with other people. To sort of spread the word it means a lot. And now I just got a message from Mr. Rod Powell. I love that guy. If you're interested in space, check out Rod Powell's podcast over at Twitter's This Week in Space. I don't have any interest in space, but I like their show. I, I like their show. I like him and, and Tarek Malik. Um, I like their show. They, they keep my attention. I'm not I got no interest in space, but they keep my attention and, and do a really good job on that show. It is. How about I just show it on the screen here? Let me move this here. And twit.tv dash twiz. Yeah, T W I S. Um, is it going? I thought I typed it in. T W I S. Enter. Oh, website slow. Ruh -roh. <laughs> well, just go to twit.tv slash T W I S and you will see. Um there it is. Now it's popping up. I wonder what took that so long. So there, here you go. These are the guys. Mr. Rod Powell and Tarek Malik. And last week they talked about the upcoming back then eclipse and all the information there. Good show this week in space. All right. Getting out of here, folks. Uh, Mr. Ozone Nightmare says, I appreciate these streams. Always good time being all over the place. <laughs> I always part of the fun. <laughs> it is part of the fun. <laughs> Office hours can be whatever you want. Yes, it can be. It can be whatever I want. You're right. All right, folks, have yourselves a good weekend. Getting ready to handle all of this stuff I got today. Got a track meet to shoot tomorrow and a 10 because my son is running in it too. And a photo shoot with someone that you all may be familiar with on Sunday. Uh, looks like the weather's going to hold up, so that's going to be good to go. Outstanding. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for telling everybody else about us. Um, thank you for people that are part of the Patreon community. I really do appreciate you. Hit you there. Um, thanks for being there. And uh, next week is going to be a little bit different. Got some travel stuff to do. So schedule may be wonky. I don't know if I can do office hours next week or not, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted one way or another. Just go to the website, ampruitt.com slash blog to see the blog post or just go to amperit.com and you see everything all right y'all be good take care do something good for yourself do something good for someone else and freaking create and dominate take care <laughs>